welcome. I'm on a little bit of a cinnamon roll kick right now. I tried the tasty four minute mug cinnamon roll, which left me wanting to make a more legit cinnamon roll. Go check that out if you want. Okay, so in my recent perusings of Instagram, I saw this guy, I had never seen him before, and he had this recipe for four little cinnamon rolls, like a small batch of cinnamon rolls. So I'm like super into the small batch recipes now, especially since baking ingredients are kind of limited at the stores and also you don't want to be spending like, extra money on stuff. And there's no one to really share anything you make with besides who you live with. So I don't know, making small batches is so fun and everything always turns out so cute and delicious. Hopefully an effective use of your ingredients if, they, if it actually turns out good. I've kind of made it a goal to try out other people's recipes who aren't, you know, as well known as like tasty. I mean, tasty, everyone knows about tasty. Blah, blah, blah. There's so many cool recipe creators out there and I really want to keep trying their recipes. I've tried a few other ones on my channel. So today we're trying Mike Bakes New York City mini batch of cinnamon rolls. And this recipe has no eggs in it. That's a concern of yours. I don't know about you, but I'm very excited to see how these turn out. I've never made a small batch of cinnamon rolls. So who's ready? Let's take in for a closer look. Cause my tripod broke so i'm about to do some freaking weightlifting right now and lift this table that you're on and bring it over mm, jesus lord of christ don't hit the toes we are gucci this recipe does use yeast and in his recipe he uses instant dry yeast i only have rapid rise and i'm pretty sure that I, I don't need to bloom the yeast. So I'm just gonna skip the blooming part and mix everything together in this bowl. I think that's correct. Okay, so we're gonna start with the flour. Only one cup of flour. That's an efficient use in these dire times. A little bit of sugar. Five tablespoons of warm milk. I just heated this up. I have to put that in. Put in the yeast. And put in the melted butter. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It came together really nice, and now we're just gonna knead it for, he says, five minutes. I'm gonna keep it in the bowl and just try to knead it in here. And he said it's totally chill to add a little more flour if you need to. Then we have to let it rest for 20 to 30 minutes. While we're letting it rest, we can make the filling and maybe the icing. So let's roll up the sleeves and get to work on this thing. Look at how precious this is. Oh, That is so freaking cute. We're just gonna put it back in the same bowl. It's pretty greasy dough, so I don't think we're gonna have any trouble with it sticking. Cover it and let it rise. Cover it here with my special dish towel that actually probably should be washed. Okay, so for the filling. I like this recipe already because everything is using melted butter, which sometimes when you're making cinnamon rolls, there's just softened butter in it. And same thing with the filling. I just like using melted butter because it's way easier to manage. For the filling, it has brown sugar, cloves, and cinnamon. A little tip for you, if you didn't know, it's really easy to make brown sugar out of regular sugar. If you just put a little molasses in your white sugar and stir it around, you get brown sugar. That's all brown sugar is. I learned that on YouTube actually, and ever since then, I love making like fresh brown sugar. It's come in handy. So we can go ahead and pour that in. And then two tablespoons of delicious melted butter. Yeah, maybe we'll try to take you in for this because I feel like this is going to be a beautiful moment. I love seeing sugar and butter stirred together. Can you relate? I don't know. That turned out very nice. I mean, it doesn't look nice if you don't know what I'm doing, but. Now the frosting, I'm not gonna film me making the frosting just because I feel like, I don't know. I, I just don't like making frosting. That's something I just don't enjoy. I, mean, I don't know why. I don't know. And he has a really special, delicious looking frosting, but I don't have cream cheese and I don't have van vanilla bean paste. If I did, that would be awesome, but I don't. I'm just gonna make a simple one with the powdered sugar, a splash of like softened butter and milk. You know, just keeping it simple. But I wish I did have at least like vanilla bean or vanilla bean paste to like add into it. So that is it. Now we just have to wait for the dough to rise. Let's dig into Mike a little more while we have some time. So his Instagram, first of all, his feed is amazing. amazing. Everything looks super good. And I see here looking that he's releasing a brownie recipe book called Even Better Brownies. And the picture looks phenomenal. So basically this dude is a lawyer, baker, recipe developer, food photographer, he does it all. So slight dilemma here. It's recommended to make these in a six inch cake pan, which I do not have with me. I do have like these little three inch cake pans like two in, but I'm thinking that the, the walls like aren't high enough. So I'm thinking the best bet would be using a muffin tin because I want all the sides touching. So I think I'm just gonna end up doing one in here, see how it goes with one. That could be a bad idea. And then I'm gonna try the other ones in the muffin tin. Here's the dough, it's definitely bigger in size. It's not too much bigger, but I think we're just gonna go with it for now. It smells divine. Now we gotta roll this out, put the filling on it. You know the deal. And these have to rise again once you do the filling and then put them in their pan, so. 
We'll get to it, we'll get through it. Mike suggested putting brown sugar at the bottom for a little caramelization on top of the bun. I didn't feel like making any more brown sugar, so I just used some like little coconut sugar I had in this cute little packet. We'll see if it turns out good. Hopefully it doesn't like burn or something. I've never done that before. I put them in the little cake pan and I put them in the muffin tins and we'll see if they get a little bigger. They have to rise for 15 to 20 more minutes. We're almost to the finish line, hang in tight. So here they are. They don't look too much more risen, but they definitely are poofier. So we're gonna put them in. It's been 20 minutes. Let's see what the end result is. Hopefully these muffin tins are not a disaster, but the only problem is anything at this point. How freaking good do these look? Okay, this is the one that I put in the single pan, but this kind of looks like a fancy little artisan bow. And they came out of the pan, no prob. I feel like these smell extra good because of the cloves that was in there. There's just a little pinch of cloves with the cinnamon. Let's dig in, shall we? Which one should we go into first? This one? Ooh, flaky, delicious. What does it look like? Ooh, let's go in. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Wowza. Holy crap. That is so good. Where do I even begin? The outside is nice and crispy. The center was so gooey and delicious. Oh my gosh. And so soft. And the melted butter is making it so tender and just a split. You can like taste the butter in there. I actually love this. I put the coconut sugar on the bottom to kind of caramelize and it makes it taste like a sticky bun and it is so good. This definitely has the right amount of filling to dough to icing. It's like perfect the perfect combination oh i'm loving this so much how fluffy this turned out thank you mike thank you so much for this recipe okay so that was this recipe i would 100 percent recommend going and trying this recipe and that was super fun and super worth it thank you for watching check out the other vids if you want they're there if you don't want to they're there if you do okay cool good talk today see you later